Um, let's take the lights down just a little bit. Well, hello. Thank you all for coming tonight. Uh, my name is Mark Satrakian, and um, I'm a roboticist, and I'm also a puppeteer. And these things have kind of shaped my career. Um, when I was a kid, I wanted to be an inventor. My idol was Leonardo da Vinci and Jacques Cousteau. And then when the Star Wars movies came out, I was fascinated by filmmaking. And when I was 19, my dream came true, and I got a job at ILM, which was George Lucas's Industrial Light and Magic. I got a job working on a George Lucas production. It's a very famous film. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that actually was when I started to embark on this career in puppeteering, which would evolve into a career in robotics, because puppets and robots are intersecting. They've been intersecting for a long time. And in my work, I have been working um, as a puppeteer. So that's me <laughs> in, uh, in the year 2000. And this is the type of puppeteering that I do. So what you see here is, first of all, it's an ensemble. There are several people doing puppeteering at the same time. And I'm using a, a technical system. I'm using a, a radio control. I'm controlling a, a creature that's over there somewhere. And this is how I would convey the spirit of a living thing into an inanimate object through this, this technical process. Um, and it was really uh, incredible watching on video a few minutes ago. Um, and also, right? doing this amazing work with their, with their hands. And I do that too. I, I use my hands, but I also use these, these technical processes. So I have controlled and operated and designed mechanical creatures like this grass wolf from Lake of the Water. Uh, sometimes I work on animatronic suits. Again, it's an ensemble, so we have a human actor with a mechanical head, or in some cases, just a completely abstract mechanical thing that, that transforms. And through all of this, I've been evolving this process of puppeteering through technology. Now in the 90s, the 90s was the golden age of creature animatronics. And I think my favorite film from that time is Men in Black. So Men in Black was really a tour de force of creature animatronics at a time when it was just peaking. CGI was starting to become a thing. But uh, in Men in Black, the, the movie is about aliens who live among human beings. And this uh, character here, called Mr. Gentle, is, a, uh, is an alien that lives inside a robot body that looks like a person. And so the scene that we're going to talk about here is a scene that I worked on. And it begins with this body and our heroes discover that this body that's on this table is actually a robot. And inside, there's this little alien. So this is a whole puppeteering uh, ensemble performance that's going on. We have this mechanical head that just opened up that was being controlled by a person. The puppeteer did that. And in the center of all of this, we have superimposed onto this life-size body, we have this large-scale version of our alien. And he's being puppeteered. And He's being puppeteered by, by five people. There's one person that's just doing the breathing. There's one person that's just doing the left hand, someone else doing the right hand. Another puppeteer is puppeteering the neck. And then I'm puppeteering the creature's eyes. And the last thing is the mouth. And when we shot this scene, we shot it twice. We shot it once with the principal cast with this tiny puppet. This puppet is actually two inches tall. And so I've got my radio control rig, I'm off camera, I'm by myself, there's only one puppeteer required for this. And I'm doing the character's voice, I'm doing this little alien's voice. And Will Smith is there, Linda Fiorentino is there. It was funny because Linda kept looking over at me. So I'm, I'm, you know, I'm hidden. I'm not like, like a Boon Raku puppeteer. I'm actually absolutely hidden from, from you. But she couldn't help but look at me while we were doing this scene. <laughs> 
And then finally, he dies. But I have, um, as a way of kind of wrapping up this segment, I have something that is really you've never seen anywhere. It's the dailies from this shot. And so you're gonna see uncut his performance as a little alien from Men in Black. So here we go, this is, a, this is very special. puppeteering tool set, and uh, this is a bit of a, of a hard turn in the presentation here, but in my 20s, I, I went into a music shop and I saw a synthesizer for the first time. So a synthesizer is a musical instrument that's covered in knobs. It's just like this incredible thing. And uh, when I saw it, it was like this tool of imagination. You could turn the knobs and make any possible imaginary sound. And sometime later, I started thinking about using concept of synthesis to synthesize motion. So I started thinking about the puppets and the creatures and the robots that I was making as musical instruments that have, uh, uh, have a relationship with as a performer. So when I was working on Stranger Things, I developed a control system to control this very strange, freaky creature called the Demogorgon. So the Demogorgon has this kind of meat face it's like a, it's like Audrey II from Little Shop of Horrors, but in an even more horrible way. And to control it, I came up with a system that is essentially like a synthesizer. Some of the elements of it are moving in a way that is being controlled in real time. So I'm using my sticks to control, but then I invoke the next step. It opens up, and now we have all of this autonomous motion that's being controlled by little modulation sources. And these modulation sources are similar to the way you would bring life to a sound, I'm bringing life to a moving thing. And I've expanded that, and here we have a creature from um, the Tomorrow War. So this is a, a radio-controlled, uh, computer-controlled creature. And if you notice the joysticks I'm controlling it with, I'm actually doing the, my presentation with the control station that I used in the movie. Um, from basically controlling something like the neck, we then have other elements that we add. So I can add breathing, I can add all this agitation, all this life that gets brought to the creature, and then I'm puppeteering on top of that. So I'm treating the creature like it's an instrument and then learning how to play it. This is an example of taking these modulation sources, which is like noise, it's like, a, it's like this very gentle, flowing noise, I'm applying it to all the, the, the muscles of this figure's neck and mouth. And what you see is she's mumbling to herself and she's moving around, she seems to be in a trance. And all of those motions are synthesized. I, I love this, and the reason why we um, made this head, it looks exactly like the actors, is there's, some, there's something else going on. If you haven't seen the movie, I'm not gonna spoil it for you. So there's more to this than just this, uh, this face. A recurring thing in my work is fluid motion. And 
And one of the ways that I explore creating fluid motion is through doing art projects. Sometimes my own art projects, sometimes projects for other people. Um, it's an opportunity to explore motion in a much more abstract way. So this is an art piece, this is one of my art pieces. Um, this is called Cascade. And it's an example of taking the concept of motion synthesis to an extreme where uh, what you're seeing is evocative of something that's alive. Um, when I look at this, I, I see a sea creature or maybe I see something that's flying. Um, one of the things about this is that it never repeats itself. You can watch it for hours and it will always surprise you in some way. Um, I find it very relaxing. It's like having a fish tank. Um, it's currently above my, my, uh, my work table at Spectral Motion. This is another one. This is uh, something you saw at the beginning of the, the piece. This is called Axis. And this is a, uh, it's a hand. It's a, it's a left hand that has four fingers and a thumb. And when I thought of doing this, I thought, oh, I'll have a hand that, that turns a ball. I had no idea how to do that. But having something like this, having a project like this was uh, a way to explore just another facet of motion that I hadn't explored before that I can then bring into other projects as I move forward. Many of the things that I work on are humanoid, uh, like the little alien from Men in Black, but sometimes I work on, um, this is this is really trashy. This is like a super trashy thing. So uh, I worked on this TV show. It was a reality show called Robot Combat League. So Robot Combat League is um, these huge, like eight foot tall hydraulic robots that beat the crap out of each other. And uh, one of the challenges was uh, controlling the robots. So we think about um, how to make a humanoid robot work. I can't use a motion synthesizer, obviously, because someone has to control it. So I came up with, um, <laughs> this is the back of the envelope, so I, I literally drew a sketch on the back of an envelope, and that became the physical robot itself. So from that little, little cocktail napkin of a sketch, we came to this. Mm. So what I'm doing here is I'm controlling the robot with what we call an exosuit. So an exosuit, in this case, is a mechanical suit that duplicates the anatomy of the robot. So why couldn't I just use like a motion capture suit or something like that? Well, one of the things that is challenging when controlling a, a robot is that we're only imitating the human anatomy. So the robot anatomy and the anatomy of the person who's controlling it, which is me in this case, are really not the same. So the suit is a way to map or reinterpret human anatomy and apply it to the robot. Another thing that's cool about it is that when you reach the end of the range of motion, you can feel it. You actually have physical feedback from the suit, which allows me to, to know how far I can go and therefore make the motions of the robot look better. Uh, this is loud. Okay, so no, no problem. Um, So they were pretty intimidating. Anyway, um, <laughs> and they beat the crap out of each other. Uh, I have a much longer presentation that goes into the, the gory details of exactly how all these machines were made, but um, suffice it to say how they were unmade. Um, so back in 2014, um, a video went viral on uh, YouTube of a robot dancing in an art museum, and the robot is called Female Figure, and this, uh, yeah. here she is. So this particular video freaks people right out. Um, what this thing does is she dances in front of a mirror, she dances to music, and she looks you in the eye, so you may be judging her and she is judging you as well. And I can tell you that all of the motion you're seeing here was done through the motion synthesizer. In other words, this is not motion capture of a person. This was all um, created directly uh, with a control system that's actually here on this day. Um, so we're going to the next video. This, uh, as I said, this uh, uh, briefly was something of a sensation. 
Um, and it was also the reason why I got in touch with Disney. So one of the reasons why I got to do Disney Spider-Man was because of this figure. But you can see how she's staring into the camera. It's, uh, and then sometimes stares at herself, which is uh, a little tricky. I, uh, I find it kind of mesmerizing. Have you guys seen this before? Have you seen this for the first time? You've seen it before, right? You have. Um, is on display right now in Germany, which seems appropriate. Um, she started out as a clay sculpture. Um, the artist responsible for the piece is Jordan Wilson, who's standing next to me in this shot. And the process of uh, creating her was um, an engineering effort. Uh, the, the lumber of details go into something little studs on her face, for example, those are snaps that secure her silicone skin to her cheekbones. Um, she has a very freaky mouth. Mm -hmm. And she actually has, underneath that ugly witch mask, she has a very beautiful face. The thing in the center of the screen there is a camera. That is the camera that she uses to um, do facial recognition and make eye contact with people who are looking at her. Um, the whole motion synthesizer thing um, was uh, really pushed to its limits on this project, but I, I really like the uh, just the gestural nature and the hands. I, I especially find the hands very fascinating, very rewarding to work on. Um, this is, uh, <coughs> I have to be careful where I show this video because it's, it's a little disturbing, but at the same time, uh, for me, it's hard not to see just the beauty of the motion of the figure. And even in this context, in this, where it's like, it's like with Woodrow, you, you can see that there's a rod attached to her, to her chest. You can see that she's standing on a piece of plywood, but at the same time, the motion is just mesmerizing. So as I've been Developing these systems and working on these all these different robots. Um, recently, I started on something new, which I'm going to show you in a minute. It's right here. It's okay. Do you want the last fire now? I think so. So the name of the robot is Stalker. And I'm going to peel back the curtain here for a moment and show you first the control system. So this is one of the motion synthesizers. This is a Stalker's motion synthesizer, actually. And you can see that the Stalker is forward from this. This is the first time I've tried doing a PowerPoint presentation and running the robot control system. <laughs> the same um, in fact, this is the first time I've, I've even shown uh, Stalker in public in a venue that wasn't um, equipped with like a battle box. <laughs> so you're getting really a behind the curtain um, experience here. Oh. Oh. Robocop. Oh. 
So, that's Stalker. All right. Woo! Stalker. Yeah. Um, Stalker is a walking robot, and it's a little different from things that I've made before because I don't really have 100% control over what it does. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting in a horror movie, right? Normally, with a puppet, I have uh, explicit control over every joint, and I'm really not doing that in this case. Um, I have different modes, so I can make it get very low to the ground, like this. Um, it's really fun to drive it, but as I say, it's, it can be a little surprising sometimes. Um, <laughs> awesome and uh, it has some surprises too. Um, each of the legs is a leg, of course, but it's also kind of a mini robot in itself. So, I have uh, all these different um, things that we can do. One of the things that it has is inverse kinematics, which means that you'll notice that the, the end of the jaws there are staying fixed in space as the, as the body moves around. Um, that, was some, that was a tool I didn't have before. So that's going to find its way into the next project, wherever that is. Um, it has other legs too. Let's uh, spin this around. By the way, this is really fun. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> and I apologize in advance if I'm leaving like well up for things on the top Stalker weighs 77 pounds and was built as uh, an R&D platform. So what this robot is, means to me is that some things that you're seeing, the inverse kinematics, the ability to change different modes, these are things I wasn't able to do before, but now these are going to find their way into new projects. Um, wow. And it's nice and strong, too. This is super satisfying. Um, and I know we have... Uh, we have time for Q&A. That pretty much wraps up my, my part of the presentation. Wow.